the king itself has three main phases. In the first one we create a rough key. It's just simply a matter of separating our actors from the background. Add the key light effect to the shot and sample the background color. If the background is unevenly lit, just sample the color that is roughly somewhere in the middle in terms of brightness. Let's switch the viewport to the alpha channel mode. This will give us a more detailed overview of what will be transparent in our shot and what will not. Everything that is white will be in frame and everything that is black will be transparent. First, we set the optimal value of the screen balance parameter. The goal is to achieve the best possible contrast between the actor and the background. Set up clip black and clip white. We have to set them so that our character is completely white and the background is completely black. It's the best to get rid of all the shadows as well. Don't be afraid to go into extreme with the values, even at the cost of losing details in the hair and ugly jagged edges. In this phase, it's only a matter of creating a rough high contrast mask. When we are happy with the mask, it's necessary to switch the key light to the intermediate result mode. In the basic settings, the key light also removes the green spill from the shot. But we don't want that for now, because it would disrupt the process of mask refinement. In the second phase of keying, we focus on quality of the edges and the smoothness of the mask. For this, we use the key cleaner effect. This effect takes our rough mask and refines it based on local contrast. Thanks to it, we will get back the fine details in the hair and get rid of jagged edges. The value of additional edge radius is important for us here. Set how far from the given edge the key cleaner will calculate the details. The value I use is usually something between 5 and 50. You need to try different values and find out what will work best for your shot. In general, the smaller the figure is in the frame, the smaller the value will be. For example, if we have a close-up shot with a lot of fine hair details, the value will be higher. The final stage of keying is to remove the green spill. What I use is advanced spill suppressor effect. The process is really simple. I just apply the effect to the shot. This completes the first step of our keying, but I use two pass keying. This will ensure that not only the figure is part of the shot, but also the shadow is included. First, I duplicate the layer and delete all the effects and masks. I'll add a tint effect, making the shot black and white. Then I used levels to isolate the shadows. I want the darkest shadows to be black and the floor around the shadows to be white. Then I add the shift channels effect. This will convert the luma channel to an alpha channel. I want the shadows to be completely black in the luma channel and have their intensity controlled only by the alpha channel. This is very important if you want the shadows to work properly on any background color. If the background color is darker, then the shadow must be darker too. And if we had information about the intensity of the shadow in the luma channel, then its intensity would be the same for each background, and we don't want that. We switch the alpha channel to luminance and red, green and blue to full off, and invert the alpha. This results in semi-transparent shadows that will work only by darkening the color below them. Now it would be even better if the shadows were only under our actor. So we pre-compose the shadow layer and mask out only the necessary part of the shad. Let's see how the shadows work on the background color. Set opacity to desired shadow strength. Turn off the background color. Now if we switch to RGB straight view, we can see really weird edges around our actor. I don't know exactly why After Effects does this, but these edges are then visible in Unreal Engine, so it will be necessary to get rid of them. We are going to create a new black solid and place it down below our layers. This fixed the edges, but our alpha channel is gone now. We will create an adjustment layer and add a set matte effect. We select our mask layer and choose effects and masks next to it. This has restored our alpha channel. I forgot to include the shadows in the alpha, so I pre-compose both layers into a new composition and select this new pre-composition in the matte set. We can see that the alpha is fine now, and so are the edges. 
By this, we successfully completed the keying phase. In some cases, the footage is so problematic that the simple workflow for keying is not enough and it's necessary to get into some more advanced methods. I will explain these to you in my advanced course that I'm currently preparing. But for most cases, a simple workflow like this should be enough. Now we need to export the shot as a sequence of images. Thanks to it, we can import the video into Unreal Engine and see how our actor works in a 3D environment. For export, I recommend using a sequence of PNG images. We must not forget to include the alpha channel in the video output settings. In this case, I render at half resolution. Select the file path and render. 